Beyond Wrestling. This is Denver, Colorado. The man not the place. Tournament for number two. Block B finals. Do not adjust your set. Yes, we see a rematch from last night's non-tournament contest between JT Dunn and Kimberly. Although this time, there is a lot much more at stake because the winner of this bout will go on to face Green Ant tomorrow afternoon at the tournament for tomorrow two finals at FET Music. Unbelievable to think that just 24 hours ago, these two were standing toe to toe in this very ring and JT Dunn not trying to waste any time. Are we gonna see a repeat? of the tournament for tomorrow in two block A finals where that match was over just before it began but instead now Kimberly dropping Dunn on his head. That's the move that she used to beat him last night. And Dunn kicking out at two. Popping right back up. But both competitors the same idea at the same time. And you gotta think JT Dunn, he has not had an easy path to get here. Having to defeat Candice LeRae and Christina Von Erie to make it to the block B finals. Kimberly, no easy feat in her own right, having to, having to take on Rory Mondo and Allison Kay, who pulled out every dirty trick in the book that I've ever seen, some that I hadn't even seen before. Trying to burn her with a straightening iron. All those matches you can watch for free on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash beyond wrestling. Getting back to the action at Hannah, I mean, we're about a minute in, both these competitors are absolutely spent. Not only what they took out of each other, just facing off last night, but having to get through the tournament today with so much at stake tomorrow afternoon. This might not be Kimberly's best strategy to go strike for strike with JT Dunn. She has proven to be one of the best strikers on the Beyond Wrestling roster. You see that red elbow pad protecting that right elbow. He's been finishing off a number of opponents with that rolling elbow. And as tired as Kimberly is, as hard as it is for her to draw breath, the fact that JT Dunn appears to be targeting the bread basket is not gonna do her any favors. Another shot right there to the abdomen. Dunn, snap mirror in position away from the ropes. Just a drop kick between the shoulder blades. Kimberly slumped over. Is that gonna be it for Dunn? Kimberly kicks out. Again, both of these wrestlers taking a much more methodical approach than what we saw last night. Possibly out of their control. But just like that, Kimberly can turn it up. But Dunn's got her, stout, got her scouted, was out of the way of that Enziguri attempt. Now look for a German suplex. And Kimberly able to find a reversal, trying to get underneath her opponent. Dunn grabbing the ropes. Kimberly can throw a hell of a German suplex but done with the standing switch. And taking her down with that low ace crusher. Is that gonna do it? One, two, and Kimberly was not able to kick out but using her free leg to get underneath the ropes. Of course, that maneuver from JT Dunn, a variation. Signature offense from Johnny Gargano. JT Dunn faced just a couple months ago at FET Music and even though he came up short, obviously learning from some of the best wrestlers on the scene right now, one of his contemporaries. And perhaps if there's one advantage that Kimberly has over JT Dunn in the striking department, it is connecting with those kicks. Very powerful legs of Kimberly. She's able to back JT Dunn into the corner. Just firing a number of shots, but there you see, there's not nearly as much oomph behind them as we saw last night. And even still, Kimberly can't even capitalize, having to take a breather on the ropes. Oh, caught him good right there, though. JT Dunn crumpled into a heap. Kimberly is going for the pin. Is that going to do it? Dunn kicks out. Not enough coverage on that lateral press. Of course, both of these wrestlers crowd favorites here. He's going to neutralize having that advantage. Honestly, knowing what these competitors are capable of, the crowd's just gonna be in this one to see a good competitive match. And done with the European uppercut, a bit foreign for him. But caught Kimberly off guard, sent her face first in that top buckle. Thought he was gonna be looking for an Irish whip, and instead, continuing to target the abdomen of Kimberly. Now just smothering her in the corner, taking his time, caught up with that back elbow. Might have caught her in the air, might have caught her in the temple, hard for me to tell. 
from my vantage point, but Kimberly slumped in the corner, and another attack to the sternum of Kimberly. Again, rolling her away from the ropes. One, two, and that was great coverage from JT Dunn as well. You saw the way that he pulled his free arm to really get as much coverage as he could on Kimberly. She still kicked out. This could be a mistake on Dunn's part, though. Considering he relies so heavily on those strikes, he has to get his opponent into position, typically meaning a vertical base where it's easier to find a counter. There, Kim extending the leg. And now perhaps looking for a code red! The impact into the pin, all stacked up on his neck! Oh, man! That might have been Kimberly's best chance so far in this matchup to defeat JT Dunn. You can tell she's really having to dig deep. Crawling across the ring as Dunn struggles to get to the ropes. It's been a handful of hair. Again, with so much at stake, both of these competitors, seems at this point in the match, are not above bending the rules to get an advantage. But Kimberly making the same mistake that JT Dunn did. She had her opponent down on the mat. Perhaps not enough strong game, not a strong enough ground game to capitalize. Instead, sending JT Dunn back down. But even from the ground, Dunn's firing back. Kimberly just collapsed after he kicked her in the knee. Things are starting to get a bit uncomfortable here. You can tell both these competitors are really hurting. And even still, you know, Green Ant has got a full day to recover before heading into tomorrow's show. Gonna wonder what kind of a factor that's gonna have, whether he's gonna be facing Kimberly or JT Dunn at the tournament for tomorrow, two finals. And now Dunn changing up his strategy, looking for that half crap, seeing if he can get Kimberly to submit. Certainly not a hold that JT Dunn has perfected. And right now, giving up some of the leverage on the knee instead to pin Kimberly down. He's not gonna be doing as much damage, but he can apply this hold for a longer period of time with that foot in a lower back. Starting to lose his balance. And Kimberly able to reach over to the ropes and keep her chance in this matchup alive. But for how long? You know, JT Dunn thinking, what's it gonna have to take in order to defeat Kimberly and move on to the tournament for tomorrow, two finals. Now just trying to knock Kimberly back down. I think going for a submission was his best bet, continuing to target the knee, rather than letting Kimberly fight back up to a vertical base. Kimberly has proven to be so very tough in this tournament. The beating that she was able to withstand from her training partner in Rory Mondo at the CCW Academy, and then all of the dastardly tricks that Allison Kay pulled out to try and foil Kimberly. I mean, it was just not enough. Come on, man. And now Kimberly again using those powerful legs. Although who knows the condition of her knee to really torture JT Dunn in this hold. Very, very difficult hold to find a counter for. Very difficult hold to escape. JT Dunn's best bet is going to be use, use his legs to try and push Kimberly into a position where he can pin her in hopes that she will give up the hold. As you can see right there, she was still able to kick out and maintain that submission. Longer she applies this hold, the weaker that JT Dunn is gonna get. Dunn trying to free his hands now. She still has the body scissors applied. We saw Dunn going after the injured knee. Now trying to turn Kimberly over. Able to hold onto the leg and right back into the half grab. He's got a better position on it this time, although he needs to step over with his left leg and really sit down in order to sink it in. sure if he's able to do that. As you can see, Kimberly's still trying to get to the ropes. And now the crowd is split. Half the fans in favor of Kimberly, half in favor of JT Dunn. But perhaps Dunn is blocking that out of his mind right now. Just kicked her right in the face. Great coverage on the lateral press, but did not hook the leg. It makes it a lot easier for the competitor to shift their body's weight, and use that momentum to kick out. That's exactly what you saw right there. Dunn's really starting to get desperate here. He's got Kimberly back up on her feet, still maintaining control, brings her over to the ropes. Gonna send her for the ride. 
Kimberly out of the way of the clothesline. Oh, and spiked him with that head scissors. Dunn's out on his feet. He's on Dream Street. And spiked him with the Hurricane Ronda. That's what she beat Allison K with. Dunn's still kicking out. Oh, the third impact to the head in less than 30 seconds. One, two, three. I don't know how he kicked out of that. You want to talk about wrestling on instinct alone. This is why JT Dunn has proven to be one of the very best on the Beyond Wrestling roster in such a short period of time. The fact that Kimberly is standing toe to toe is quite the accomplishment. But neither of these competitors are out of the game yet. We saw the first ever tournament for tomorrow launch careers. Not just for the winner, but all of those involved. And everybody that has competed in this year's tournament for tomorrow, 16 competitors have done an outstanding job making waves within the world of professional wrestling. But there is no doubt that this year, the winner will go on to bigger and better things. Right now, it looks like it's gonna be Kimberly. Oh, looking for the Gonzo Bomb once again. JT Dunn looking for the counter. Kimberly holds on. How close can it get? JT Dunn lifting her up. Oh, caught her with the knee right to the forehead. And there's the rolling elbow. Punch right through her. And able to knock her out. The extension on that rolling elbow was enough to connect with Kimberly. Almost drove the point of his arm right through her skull. You can see him favoring that arm. Who knows how much damage he did to himself. But the story right now is that JT Dunn, thanks to that maneuver right there, followed it up with the rolling forearm. Is gonna go on to face Green Ant tomorrow afternoon at Fet Music. The winner of Tournament for Tomorrow Block B, JT Dunn, against the winner of Tournament for Tomorrow 2 Block A, Green Ant. A first time ever match, two competitors with all the momentum in the world. JT Dunn, who has laid it all out in the ring. Not just today for Block B, but again his match last night with Kimberly where he came up short. Really proving just how much that he deserves this win here today. And not only that, the sportsmanship, you see JT Dunn trying to help Kimberly shake the cobwebs. You don't want to see anybody get hurt here, but of course, knockouts are part of the game. Kimberly coming to, realizing, unfortunately, that she did come up short against JT Dunn tonight. But again, she's been so impressive all weekend. Nothing to be ashamed of. Still though, to fight as hard and to sacrifice as much as she did. Obviously that's gotta be a bummer. And there you see JT Dunn's partner on the floor, David Starr, who's been so supportive of him all weekend. I think the sky's the limit for JT Dunn. Not only the potential to launch his singles career tomorrow to win over Green Ant, but also all the potential he has with this tag team with David Starr, the juicy product. And I think without question, Kimberly has earned herself a full time spot on the Beyond Wrestling roster with her performances this weekend. But to the victor go the spoils. And tomorrow night, JT Dunn will headline FET Music for the first time ever against Green Ann. Hell of a match. Hell of a tournament. Thank you guys for supporting, as always, YouTube.com slash Beyond Wrestling.